On today's show, we recap speaker Nick Vujicic's visit to our school and the impact it left behind. And we have the story on a family that has taken over Prosper ISD Fine Arts, directing three separate bands across the district. And finally, on today's show, we look into a sport that is acing it among all ages with the simple swing of a dink shot. All this and more on this edition of Hilltop News. What's well, rockin' Rock Nation and welcome back to another episode of Hilltop News. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Connor Fuxa. And I'm Veronica Volchak. We have a great show in store for you all today, but first Veronica is going to catch you up on everything going on around the hill, including the announcement of the new Walnut Grove principal that is impacting us here at Rock Hill. Veronica? On Friday, Prosper ISD announced our principal Dustin Toth will be transferring this winter to be the principal of Walnut Grove opening in August. The statement released by Prosper ISD read, we are so excited to open Walnut Grove High School, led by an outstanding principal such as Mr. Toth. He opened Rock Hill High School in the middle of a global pandemic and did an amazing job creating a school filled with pride and academic and extracurricular success. We know that he will continue to do an exceptional job as principal at the Grove and establish a culture of excellence, pride, and unity. Said Prosper ISD Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Holly Ferguson. We will hear more from Mr. Toth about his departure from Rock Hill at the end of today's show. This week is Red Ribbon Week, which is celebrated in schools across the country to spread awareness and educate students about the risks involved with substance abuse. With this week being Wear Red Day, we all wore red today at HTN to show our support. For the rest of the week, make sure to keep dressing up. Tomorrow is Little Miss Not Addicted Day, so design and wear your own personalized Little Miss Mr. Shirt. Following that on Wednesday is Ride on Sobriety or Surfers vs. Bikers. Thursday is putting drugs to sleep pajama day, and on Friday for the pep rally, we are stronger together by wearing our class colors for senior night. Now, while it is a dress up week, students don't forget the PSAT will be taking place tomorrow on campus. 9th through 11th grade is ex expected to attend their given testing room at 8.30 a.m., where testing will begin around 8.45 a.m. As for seniors, you will arrive at the school by 12.15 p.m., where you will gather in the auditorium for the senior presentation. Students are encouraged to bring snacks and water for testing, and best of luck to all of our testers. The Nugent are a family of musicians directing in Prosper ISD, with father directing here at Rock Hill, mother at Rushing Middle School, and son at Rogers Middle School. Ashley Salloway has the story. For the Nugents, band is the family business. With all three of them directing band in Prosper ISD, they are able to inspire each other to be the best that they can be. I was just always seeing my grandparents be as successful as they were, seeing my parents be as successful as they were. It always it was like a constant inspiration for me to try and achieve something similar to that. Now it is a certain amount of pressure put onto me as well, but there, there's a difference between pressure and stress. They're not the same thing. And I, I don't feel stressed out by it, but I do feel a lot of pressure. While most families spend their quality time outside of work, the Nugent family spends their time supporting each other's band programs. I've actually been going over to Rogers and, and helping him. He actually had his first concert uh, uh, Monday night, and it was really cool to see the work that I've done with him and with his kids helping out. So she is helping me every day with my beginner classes, and my, um, but not just not in the building itself, but my dad, meanwhile, because he's you know across the street, is coming down like at least once a week, sometimes more than that, to watch my rehearsals and help me. The Nugents work together to teach students skills that go beyond becoming better at their instruments, using music to help them become better people. All I want for them is to be able to just like be better members of society by the time they leave my class. And that's what I enjoy about it, is this is such a great medium to teach that because it teaches collaboration, teamwork, all, all, all these like basic fundamental life skills that are so important. For Hilltop News, I'm Ashley Salloway. With this year being Connor Nugent's first year directing, it will be interesting to see where he goes from here. Now as some of you may know, today is Diwali. Tashvi Possible Lady takes a look into the celebration and what all goes into making it happen every year. Diwali or Deepavali, also known as the Festival of Lights, is a five-day celebration in which the rays of Deepas or lights bear a special meaning. So basically it's this god called Ram and basically he's one of our main gods and he was in exile for 14 years and so to celebrate his coming back we like light up the entire path basically. There's like parties with your friends and family, you spend time with them, talk to them, catch up. It's like a coming together. During the festival many families celebrate in many different ways. These customs may differ based on which region of India they belong to. 
In South India, puja is not uh, a, a very mandatory thing, though some people do it. Back in back home and uh, with parents and things like that, the elders, uh, my grandmas and those the people, they used to keep that oil in your in your head, and we used to take that ritualistic bath and then uh, uh, do a small puja in the morning, and then uh, light crackers, and then we visit friends and uh, exchange pleasantries and sweets. Regardless of how people in different regions celebrate, the common theme to take away is the triumph of good over evil. My parents are very keen on enhancing our culture and explaining important things in our history like the Mahabharata or the Ramayana. My parents are really keen on um, teaching us, so Diwali is an important festival for my parents to celebrate and just teach us about it and help us celebrate it in our modern life. As the celebration continues, as to the festivities, stories, and traditions. In the top news, I'm Joshua Kastelady. The Hindu Student Council encouraged all members to wear traditional clothing today in celebration. Check out Rock at Rock Hill HSC for featured dress-up photos. Now this past week, our school saw world-renowned speaker and author Nick Vujicic come to our school to give his message about bullying and suicide. Julio Zapata looks into Nick's inspiration as well as the impact he left behind at our school. He's gonna get that courage one day face them and say, hey, stop, oh, does that hurt you? Yeah. From being bullied as a child to starting a worldwide campaign against bullying and suicide, Nick Vujicic has had a long but rewarding journey to get to where he is today. When I was a child, the way that people treated me, um, which both positive and negative, had helped me to become who I am today. So first of all, the negative. I realized that people were judging me for how I look, so I realized I should never judge anyone for how they look or what they do or what they cannot do. Uh, on the positive, I realized, wow, um, you know, you still can be light in a dark place. And, you know, you just have no idea how many people are having thoughts of suicide or depression or anxiety. And what you do, what you say at school matters uh, to people's thoughts and their mental health. And I want everyone to know that you don't need a title in your school to be an influencer. You influence more people than you think. At age 17, his life changed forever when his school janitor told him that he would become a speaker. It gave him a purpose in his life. That purpose wasn't just for him, but to help others understand their worth as well. At age 17, I became a student leader. I spoke and my janitor at the high school said, you need to become a speaker. Long story short, I said, I have nothing to say. I have no story. He said, yes, you do. And so I spoke, people cried, and other people started inviting me to speak. From that day on, Nick has gone from speaking in front of six people to now having his message spread to over 2 billion people, as well as 77 countries. That same message he brought to campus last Wednesday and impact the student body with his words. I swear, he, he, he was about to make me cry almost all the time because of where he touched uh, my soul and that I'm not alone in all the struggles that I'm facing. His speech here on campus was broadcasted globally to ensure not only Prosper ISD students hear his message, but as many students as possible could hear it, because he wants everyone to know that they too have a purpose. For Hilltop News, I'm Julio Zapata. Nick also has been able to share his message constantly through his social medias, where he tallies over 14 million followers worldwide. Now, speaking of international icons, Veronica, can you tell us a little bit about another icon that has been taking over social media this past week? This past Thursday night marked the release of the long-awaited Taylor Swift album, Midnights. This album is her first new and not re-recorded music since Evermore in 2020. Swifties across the globe, including myself, have already been obsessing over it, which made it come at no surprise when it broke records for both most streamed album and artist in a single day on Spotify. Want to share which one is your favorite so far? Share with us on social media at rockhill.media. Now, speaking of Taylor Swift, it's time to talk about those who wear sneakers and those who are on the bleachers. Brandon McVeigh is in studio to catch you up on everything going on and all we are hoping to wake up and find this week in Rock Hill Sports. Brandon? Thank you, Veronica. Swim and Dive had their first meet this past week. They could now have gone off to a better start, setting six school records and 45 personal records. One big standout performance came from Luke Mancinilla, who helped set five of the six new school records in the 200 medley relay race, the 500 free, the 100 free, the 200 free relay, and the 100 breaststroke. Great meet overall for Swim and Dive, who will be back in action on Wednesday. 
While swim and dive just got their season started, volleyball season is sadly coming to an end, which they had two tough matchups this week against McKinney and McKinney Boyd away on Friday. Unfortunately, our girls did drop these games, losing 3-0, but our girls do have their final, se final game of the season coming up tomorrow night at home versus Denton Geyer. Now moving on to football, they also took on McKinney this past week with major playoff implications. After two successful onside kicks to start off the game, they got off to a good 10-0 lead. But unfortunately, after McKinney stepped up into another gear and controlled the game for the next three quarters, leading to the final score to be 42-10. Football looks to rebound this Friday night as they face off against McKinney Boyd for senior night. Finally, cross country had, had the, this past week off but currently, our girls team and Gabriel Delao and Matthew Kasenik are in Lubbock competing in the regional competition. Whoever is able to place in this meet today will be moving on to state. Make sure to check out Rock Hill XCTF to be updated with today's results. Now taking a step away from UIL sports, Kyle Lewis looked into one sport that is on the rise and has even made it into our PE classes. With a name like pickleball, it's hard to believe that this activity is even considered a sport. But with a combination like badminton, ping pong, and tennis, it didn't take long for people to fall in love with it. Well, you take tennis and you take like a wiffle ball and these wooden tennis rackets, right? And you, you hit the ball. Yeah, it, it takes some skill. Uh, you got to be able you know, to hold the paddle correctly and think about where you're going to hit the ball on the other side of the court. You got to know the rules of the game, obviously. So I wouldn't say there's any like, you know, stunners out there at first, but we've seen some people who are pretty good at it, who are naturally athletic and can handle the ball and the paddle really well and they excel. And then others who really caught on to it and understand if I hold it this way, the ball is going to bounce this direction. The E classes have been learning how to play pickleball. Students and coaches have gravitated towards the sport because of how easy it is to learn and play. Sure, it gets some active ultimately is what it is. And, you know, we could go on the track and, and run some laps or we could go in the weight room lift some weights but this gets you working in a multitude of different directions and has an objective to it at the same time and I think kids are really bought into like the competitiveness of it and they can play against each other one-on-one -on -one, two on two and they enjoy that aspect of it another reason people have taken a liking to this game is because it can easily be taken to the next level despite its simple rules this allows people to get competitive with very little time spent on learning how to play I think it's really one of the reasons like I like to play it is it's on the tennis court but we take up about like half of the tennis court so there's a little less athleticism involved um, my son plays tennis but he likes to play pickleball too and my daughter who's six we can all kind of play as a family um, and I think one of the reasons we like it is that you're a little bit because it's a smaller court it's very it's real social as the game continues to grow in popularity more pickleball courts are popping up all around the DFW area for Hilltop News I'm Kyle Lewis with the rise in popularity of the sport, the City of Prosper is even hosting their own pickleball tournament at Reynolds Middle School Tennis Courts on November 5th. And you can sign up through the City of Prosper with any level of experience. Now I think it's time to bring it back to our headline story of the announcement of Mr. Toth transferring to be the principal of the new high school, Walnut Grove. Yes, Mr. Toth's vision to build campus culture and value student voice is really what made Rock Hill what it is today. <laughs> we appreciate everything he has done to support all of the student groups and teams here. And we will look, to, we will look to for him to do the same at Walnut Grove. Now, while there's no doubt Toth will do amazing things at Walnut, the recent announcement of him leaving our school leaves a lot of questions for our student body. So we had Taylor Bedford sit down with Toth this morning to clear up all the confusion that came with the decision. I'm Taylor Bedford, and I'm here with future Walnut Grove and current Rock Hill principal Dustin Toth. Mr. Toth, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Absolutely. So I know many students are wondering, uh, first off, what kind of went through your head when you were making the decision to make the move to Walnut Grove? Uh, you know, a lot of it was our family because that's where our kids are, you know, we're zoned for Walnut Grove. Uh, we live on the north side of the district and that was a part of it. Uh, and so, uh, you know, another big part of it was just how much fun we had opening Rock Hill. It was a great experience, um, you know, from the start to the end of that first year, and it still is a great school. And uh, I think just being part of that again uh, is exciting uh, and being able to do it all over again. Yeah, and um, as you mentioned in your email, you said that a new principal would be announced soon. Do you have any kind of timeline you could share with us or like what that'll look like over the next few months? Uh, not that well, I know that they're looking right now. Uh, they'll start setting up some interviews, uh, you know, to fill my spot here. So then uh, probably whenever that person's named, then we'll start making that transition. I'll still be housed out of here till December. And then once December uh, hits, then 
I'll move over to our central office uh, and be fully uh, with Walnut Grove. So. Yeah. Um, and I know this situation is mostly going to be affecting current 9th through 11th graders, but I know many seniors are wondering, are you still going to be hosting the 2023 graduation in May? Yes, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> that's the plan right now. So I uh, want to work with the new principal uh, of Rock Hill and hopefully do something uh, together, but definitely want to be there for our seniors, uh, you know, who have been here for the last three years. And, uh, you know, that's a great event and, you know, I couldn't imagine not being a part of it. Yeah, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, I have to ask, what will be happening with your iconic blue sequin jacket? So that's going to be the, so whoever gets my job at Rock Hill, it'll be passed down to them uh, so that it stays here. I think that's part of the tradition and, and I've got the blue sequin shoes too, so <laughs> so they'll get both of those. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Toth, but also thank you for all that you've done to help build such a great foundation at the school, and we wish you the best in doing the same at Walnut Grove. Absolutely. Thank you. It's been fun. Uh, Rock Hill's a great place. Got a lot of great kids here, great staff, so I have no doubt that it's going to continue to be awesome uh, after I'm gone. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for today's show. For Hilltop News, I'm Taylor Bedford. Keep rocking, Bluehawks. Okay,